Hello, welcome to another episode of Free Code Session. My name is Jason Bach. I can take off my headphones because I don't need them. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do in this episode is go through some of the testing I've been doing for LOL code. And then if I get through that, I'll start looking at another idea of a project I came up with. Um, I'm recording this when it has literally been like minus 20, minus, almost minus 30 without wind chill in Minnesota <clears throat> in the, like the last week of January. My kids have actually been, the Monday was a planned day um, where they were out of school. And then the next three days they've been off um, because you know, school's been canceled. And you think we haven't had any snow really um, to, to speak of. We had the, the first night we had like four or five inches, um, but then it stopped. The reason it's been closed is because of the cold. They, um, it's just, you know, with kids waiting for buses and things like that, um, it, you know, it, it sounds odd, but it can be dangerous. And, you know, they, they definitely want to, don't want to take that risk. So um, they've been home <laughs> the last four days. Um, I, I, I definitely think tomorrow is going to warm up enough and it's funny because on the weekend it's going to get up to almost um, 40 is what I heard so you're going to have literally like a 60 degree swing it's amazing anyway what have I been doing with um, lol code so you know this has become kind of a I don't want to say a love hate thing but it's it's a code base that has a lot of things that I think need to be buttoned up a lot of things that need to be cleaned up, changed, addressed. Um, this whole parser thing I mentioned before, I have ideas as to how to make that happen, but because there's no tests, I mean, there were just no tests for this at all, trying to get this to, to, to do any kind of changes was going to be just maddening. So I started working on some tests, and as you can see, I'm now down to three failures. Um, so... <clears throat> what I have been doing, for example, is just writing tests like this that give me some coverage. The tests aren't the greatest. Um, for example, if I tell this assignment, sta assignment statement to emit IL, all of that I can really assert is that the offset is 2, which is not that helpful at all. So I'm going to have to create some abstraction around IL generator to get more of a feel that I know that it's doing the right things when um, code's running. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The other thing is that, for example, like statement here, um, if you go look at LVAL, these are all like public. So I already got a bunch of to do's that, that are saying, hey, these, you know, I've actually seen code where you have to, in some of these, call one method first to get these to be set and then call another method even though these are public so you could change them at any time um it's just it's code that's got to be cleaned up so at least having some of these tests around i know it's not going to catch everything but hopefully it'll catch enough that as i start making changes i'll know when to react accordingly so the last set of tests here are switch statement these are going to be a lot but i'm going to kind of show you walk you through what I've been kind of struggling with and trying to get this uh, code to, you know, like all these things here, you know, I'm not trying at this point to catch what everything is being done in the code. Um, <clears throat> I do need to get there at some point, but not right now. So um, I'm just trying to say, hey, if I call the, you know, the emit, um, does this actually should have process in here, I think. Because all these have process. Yeah, and then a process. And just call those. And I'm not really trying to, um, you know, catch every, catch everything. Catch them all. Pokemon exception handling. Gotta catch them all. All right. <coughs> so, this is switch statement. And I think just like all the rest of them, yep, of course. 
Yeah, and then I gotta make sure that all these are. So, what is that? Cases. Now this is something that I haven't done in all the tests. I'm hoping to eventually get um, all of them updated to do this. Which this is kind of just a style I've been playing with a little bit. Which is to actually put the type name when you're doing a name of instead of the object that you're looking at. Um, it, it's a little... I don't know. I, I'm not... It, it, it does feel weird, <laughs> um, for lack of a better, better term, um, just because, yeah, that's a, I just want to get these fields here, so default case, it, it does feel, I don't know, it's the word pendantic, um, and then the rest of those are private. I think it's almost a little bit too picky, and, and you know. But this, to me, is saying this is literally where it's coming from. The the thing where it's become kind of an uh, just a annoyance too is if you go so far down to a base type, um, then you can't put the using here. Furthermore, the name of here, um, and actually, as I'm talking through this now, this is where maybe not doing this is the right thing. I think I've just untalked myself out of it, if that's a word. Is right now name of can't handle generics. So let's say I was using, I wanted to put a member within name of that came from like a list of T or some other generic. You couldn't put it in there. That doesn't work. Um, it's something that people have mentioned, including myself, to the C sharp team. They're well aware of it um, to allow your to allow yourself to put um, to put a lot to allow a developer to put a generic in there. Um, it it's doable, you know. It's just in the grand scheme of things of all the other um, all the other types of things that need to be done in C sharp. It's low on the totem pole, but it does feel like an incomplete feature. You know that you're not allowed to do something like that. So if you could, then I would maybe be a little bit more. Um, leaning towards putting the, the type name in front of the member name. But even then, if you're, like some of these have been using count, which or something like that, which is on collection base, which is in system collections. And so then you have to put that in the using. Um, it just feels a little weird, so that's why I've now talked myself out of doing that. Okay, so if I do an omit here, Oh, no, no, no. It's got to be a switch statement. Sorry. <sighs> Breakables. See, th th this is now another thing where... Oh, that's on the... Um, on the method. Okay, never mind. Location. That gets set. See, this is also something where it's assuming that you've set at least one thing in cases. Well, what happens if you haven't? And I've, I've, I've found that in another place in code here. Um, you're going to get an exception. So that doesn't seem smart at all. But then, well, what would happen if you didn't have that set? You see, this is why I don't know the code base. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to do. So what is default case? So case and default case. What is a case? I don't remember ever seeing that. Oh. Hmm. At this point, I sometimes just put a... Uh, 
put stuff in that I think I need, and then I eventually <laughs> just run until at least I get it to not fail. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something with cases. Oops. No, you can't do that. Okay. Um, what was the other thing I needed? It's either the default label. I bet that's going to fail because labels are structs, but if the label didn't come from the IL generator that you're using, it, it will fail. So I'm going to have to probably have to work around that default case. So my memory, come on. Statement. So I did create these little helper mock things. Um, statement that cases add new case. All right. A <laughs> new mock statement. Now let's see where this fails. Because it is. It, I've done these so many, I know it's going to fail. Where did it fail? Oh, control. What is control? Control is a expression. Okay. Now it fails. <laughs> Sorry, cases. Sorted cases. Where does that get assigned? That happens in process. Which doesn't surprise me. I've seen that too, where um, you have to end up calling process first in some of these because reasons. Okay, good. Well, at least I got a number now. <laughs> got a number. And now it passes. Yay. Now we're just going to do the same thing here, except not call emit. And... That 37 is going to be wrong. Six. Okay. All right, I think I'm finally at the point where, yes, good. Um, these simple run tests. <clears throat> I'm not sure again why they're failing. Yeah, that's um, – 
Yeah, because there is a K thanks by. <laughs> so um, I'm not really sure. I think by the way is a comment. Um, I'm not really sure why that's failing because it's getting into parsing and I have no idea. So the reason why I bring that up is because I do eventually have to get those tests working. I also want to get um, like a performance test running around some of the samples. And so I have a baseline to know how long does a compilation take, um, how much memory does it take. Um, you know, having these tests in here just to say did it pass, that's good. But I also want to get some performance tests in here. But this is all because of a, um, <clears throat> a issue that I made to get unit tests in. So at least this is the first step, you know, another big step. So, yep. And then we can go to master. Put that in there. <clears throat> All right, so. What I should have now a whole stinking bunch of tests, which I do. Good. So, add a lot more tests. There's going to be more to be done. Um, okay. So, and there's a couple of other things I want to put in here. Um, one is, whoops, get the title first. So that's one of them. <clears throat> um, yeah, this one I have. So I already got that one in there. That That's a big one. It's so annoying. <laughs> better names. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> Definitely needs better names. All right, so let's just go back here and... I wish I had a right click and delete. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show, and again, this is one of these things that's just going to change, hopefully improve over time. But the other thing I'm going to start working on is this idea called Auto Mini Profiler. So, what's the idea here? So, I've been I've been on a project where I've had to <clears throat> use. Well, I, I've, I've been having to do a lot of performance investigations, research, and whatnot. It's an app that performs slow all over the place. So. I've been focusing on the back-end stuff, API calls, and 
more specifically on its database interactions. Um, so, yay, that's that's all been good. The problem is, is that for whatever reasons, um, using a profiler tool like the one in Visual Studio um, hasn't quite been as helpful as I've hoped it's been. And other tools, third-party tools, haven't really helped that much either. And I've used some that you know, names would be known if I mentioned them. So the, the thing I really just want to know is, hey, if I'm going to call a method, which methods does it call and what are the hotspots? And you'd say, well, that's what a profiler is supposed to give you. And um, for a lot of reasons that, you know, would take a lot of time to talk about, again, using these tools, just <clears throat> they haven't been helpful in finding those. So one of the ideas I had is there's this package called Mini Profiler, which is made by, I think, the, the Stack Overflow Stack Exchange team. And they apparently use this in production um, to kind of get a feel for when a page is rendered, where the time was spent in that page, which is really cool. Um, and again, if it's run in production, then that has to be very, very fast, very performant, and not adversely affect the performance of the page. And I'm guessing, even though I haven't dug into this deeply, I think what they do is they're very selective as to which methods they're profiling. Um, because if you did it everywhere, I think you'd start noticing it. But that was kind of my idea is, well, could I just put this everywhere in my code and then try to see where the hotspots are for many profilers dump? The, one of the problems I ran into immediately is because the code base is not updated in terms of its NuGet packages. It's also running against .NET Framework 4.6.1, which... I'm not very happy about um, any code these days. .NET Core is the way to go. It just it is, and it's sad in a way that a code base that's not even released to its customers just yet. I don't want to say it's obsolete, but needs a migration plan <laughs> because it just it, it needs to go to .NET Core. There's there's absolutely no doubt in my mind of that. And since they haven't stayed up to date with things, trying to include many profilers start to running into for all things system net HTTP issues, which I don't quite get. Um, I, I kind of think that the dependencies, that the base stuff for many profiler, and what it has is a little too um, catches too much. But that's a different story. So even that's not going to work. But I still want to pursue the idea. And the idea kind of looks like this, if I go to this playground thing, is this is your top node here, your main. Okay. And so what I did is I created a bunch of um, classes and methods that run code. So, for example, you'll see here, I just sleep for a little bit of time. Okay. <coughs> and the point is, is that I just want to simulate, well, have code do a, a bunch of things. Okay. So what this, um, oh my god, program, Progarum. <laughs> um, what, what the intent of the idea is first is that I have this timing creator get timing. Okay. And that does some work to figure out, do you already have a current profiler? And if you don't, create one. And then it puts it in this timing manager that that's what's returned to you as a disposable. Okay. And then you use that here. So you can just put using here. And in fact, in C Sharp 8, this isn't going to work here because this isn't um, C Sharp 8. But you're now going to be able to do something. See, it doesn't even know how to do that. But we could put that there. And then that puts a using around everything within that block. So it would look even smaller. Um, but that's okay for now. We have to do this. Come on, get back to where you were. There you go. Okay. And so you put all these around there. And then you could at any time do this and say print. So if I, this is the 
Yeah, okay. So we'll give this a second. And then the print here, so you can see that main took this long, and then with the main it calls this method, which took that long, that called this method. And of course I don't see in here, I don't think I have any for loops to call things over and over. I'm not sure, do I? Nope. Um, I don't think, actually let's just do that for a second. I was kind of curious about that. Um, let's say for r i equals zero, less than three i plus. Okay, and then run that. So you do, okay, I, I was mistaken. You do actually see the, it doesn't group them all together. Um, and this is actually kind of helpful because it may make this really long, but then you can see, oh, it called this. And then maybe if you have arguments coming in, you could have something in here that would like show, you know, what the arguments were or whatever, but um, that, that's a different story. So the point of this is then I could look at this and go, okay, well, this called this, this called this, these are taking this long, you know, um, and then, like it did here, he called the run three times, and then it calls this, and whoa, that actually took two seconds. Well, why did that take two seconds? Well, that ends up, ends up calling this, which is five seconds. It calls this, which is five seconds, and all that time is in here. So that could help out a lot. Now, of course, that's putting this into code all over the place, and so now all of your code suddenly has this telemetry, this profiling in there that you may not want, but I thought well, you could create a branch, put all that in there, and then you just run a telemetry branch, do your timings, figure out where the hotspots are, and then just get rid of the branch. Okay. Assuming you're using Git, which at this point they're using TFS version control. <sighs> I feel like I'm in the dark ages there at times. Um, it's just not as smooth as Git is. So, but here is the, the, the real trick that I want to do is I'm talking about adding this code in here. Well, I don't want to do this manually. That would be just a pain in the butt. So I'm going to be writing this tool called AutoMIDI Profiler. It's going to use Roslyn. It's going to look at your code base and just, <clears throat> you know, first pass will be any times it finds a method, it's just going to put this in here. It's going to look at what the method name is, what the um, the um, the method name, the, uh, <laughs> the the type name that owns it. Maybe at some point, like if this had int of a, then I could do something that would also say put the string in that would also put in a as well. So then I, and then I could kind of, you know, if I had more, you know, whatever, I could do that. But the point is, is have Roslyn walk through all the trees. Tell me when I run into a method definition. I have to look to see if it's a block or if it's, you know, got this Lambda syntax. And if it's got the Lambda syntax, I actually have to get rid of that and put in a block because then I have to put this using statement in and then wrap the one thing that's there. Um, but again... <clears throat> It's not meant to be permanent in your code unless you want it to be there. Um, and then, so so once it's there, <clears throat> then run, you know, some profiling sessions or whatever, and you'll get you can get all this information and go, oh, that's where all my time is being spent. So I don't know if this is actually a great idea or not. I don't know how much overhead this would add, but. It, it's a thought, and so to see how far it can go. So right now I'm I'm um, starting the the base work. I haven't really done any of the the parsing work, the test, or anything yet. Um, I actually tweeted a couple days ago. I came up with this name: Method Profiler Injection Rewriter. <laughs> but whatever. So as you can see down here, if I go into the syntax visualizer. Um, <clears throat> that this method foo here, it has the arrow expression clause. So I have to look for that. And if you have the arrow expression clause, 
I've got a, you know, equal greater than token that that's going to go away. But I eventually, essentially have to find the one thing that's in it and put that within, as you would see here, um, this method declaration has a block. Okay. Um, so you have to find a block or I have to find an arrow expression clause. <clears throat> and if it's a block is easy, then I would just try to insert into its list of nodes right at zero that using thing. And again, I might actually consider, now that I think about this, I might consider just doing this for C sharp eight and beyond. Um, just because I'm lazy and I can get away with doing that declaration because then I can literally just put it here in one line using boom and it's done. Um, and then I wouldn't have to add the block around the stuff in there. Uh, but anyway, the, the, again, the point is, is to look at all the method definitions, rewrite them, so then you'd have a code base that has all these mini profiler things injected in there. And I'm also thinking of maybe doing like some kind of filtering to say where would I want this and where wouldn't I want this. Um, because if I think of a ASP.NET core project, would I really want in there in its program to have something in here? So maybe I say in the program main method, don't do it. And then, um, <clears throat> You know, I, I have to make sure I clean things up and, and get rid of the stuff that's not there anymore. But um, then have some kind of method here, too, that I can put in to say, um, print to the console or print somewhere, anywhere, this information. Um, maybe send it to a log file or something like that. And then I can get, you know, some information about how things are, are working at runtime. So it's, and this is going to be a lot of playing and a lot of investigation, but... I think it's an interesting idea, and um, I think it might be helpful. So I'm going to start pursuing that in future episodes, and we'll start working on that. So I'm at my time, so that's all I'm going to cover in this one. Thank you for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.